Uh, hi everyone, can, can everyone hear, you, hear me fine uh, in the back? Uh, I hope it's audible. Is it audible at the back? Okay. Um, so uh, my name is Lena. I am um, talking about MDM. Uh, MDM is Mobile Device Management. Uh, just before I start, I just want to know about how much familiarity is there in the audience about MDM. So quick show of hands, how many of you have, are aware or familiar with MDM? Okay, very few. And how many have uh, used some of the, uh, any of the MDM tools? Okay, and how many of you have created your own MDM solutions? Okay, uh, so uh, this, I, I hope this will really help you to uh, build some MDM solutions. So. Um, so I'll, my talk is two parts. Uh, first, I'll give a quick overview of uh, MDM solution, uh, MDM, what it is and why it is being used. And then I'm j switching on to my experience with MDM uh, with, uh, while working with multiple uh, products. So let's start. So uh, MDM is as as I mentioned, it is centrally managing devices from a, a single location. And it should not be as complicated as this. So when you say it's centrally managed, uh, uh, managed solution, it is, it, ha it has, it, this, is the, this is the kind of picture that you get. So it should not be like that. It has to be something as simple as this. And it has to be simple, it has to be intuitive. And and this, this entire talk is about how, how we can create and what are the options available. And what, we, what did I learn uh, while doing this and, uh, what, and some of the failures too. I I'll, I'll hope I'll share some of the failures we had so that you, you guys don't have to make the same mistake. So MDM uh, actually started off as, as uh, with the enterprises, especially with the big enterprises, with the concept called enterprise mobility management where they allow their staff uh, to use their own devices within the premises uh, by ensuring that the certain security policies that they have in the, in the enterprise being, uh, being enabled on the, on the devices that they uh, bring into the premise, uh, such as password policies or PIN policies, or even encryption of certain content, allowing the, you know, allowing the content to be used only, in, only within the premises. But in the recent past, especially with, uh, with uh, Android and uh, devices generally taking a lot of influence on different businesses. We've seen enterprises, uh, businesses using devices uh, for, uh, for, uh, for where there are a lot of field staff. For example, uh, delivery boys or de where there are a lot of delivery staff, MDM is a solution that they, they will need to control these devices. And all, it can also be where, where devices are used for data collection where they go into the field, collect data, and then, then use it. So this kind of devices has to be managed remotely because these people will be on the field almost all the time. Another, another use case it's being used is where, it is where devices are being used as information chaos, uh, such as PI systems or where it is streaming content. And that is another, another place uh, where MDM is becoming uh, useful nowadays. So. Um, another, uh, another term that you usually hear in the MDM world is BYOD, that is bring your own device. And the fragmented nature of Android is complicated everywhere and it is not different in MDM because we have to allow the control and that, that kind of control has to be working across all kinds of versions, all kinds of manufacturer across. And this is a graph that shows what kind of Android, uh, what kind of fragmentation exists in, it's, it's existing in Android. And this is, this is very, very challenging in the MDM world. So uh, now let's look at some of the existing solutions. Uh, these are uh, big players of MDM solutions. Uh, almost all of them are have started uh, are are uh, in the in the area of enterprise mobility, and uh, either they have been acquired uh, by bigger companies. For for example, AirWatch was acquired by VMware, and similarly, other companies have been acquired by uh, uh, by bigger enterprises. And these are usually targeted at the enterprise mobility space, not at the 
the space where devices are used to control for uh, devices for controlling or MDM solutions for controlling uh, f uh, devices used by the field staff or for information cask. Now, in a fourth uh, theory, uh, let's go to some stories, uh, especially the stories that I have to share with my experience with MDM. Uh, for that, let's go to Sabaganda. Sabaganda is a village in Gujarat. Um, this, if you search for Sabaganda, it's, it's a district in Gujarat. If you search for Sabaganda, you see uh, it is famous for Wi-Fi enabled villages. Uh, and it's not completely all, or not all villages are Wi-Fi co controlled, but there are quite a few villages which has a lot of Wi-Fi coverage. And uh, the, the beauty of the, another interesting thing that is happening in the, there is that they have a lot of devices, Android devices, being used for data collection. So, uh, especially in the in the health health healthcare department. So th there are quite a few IAS officers uh, who are tech savvy, uh, who are the district uh, uh, who are in, who are holding the position of district development officers, along with the tech savvy doctors. They are, have developed apps and use use that for collecting data, especially in the health health, health industry and across other other departments too. So what kind of data they are collecting? Uh, they collect data about uh, the health data, uh, health, health uh, information about the villagers, especially, uh, especially the pregnant women and, and children to improve their health and the child mort mortality ratio. And they also keep track of their, uh, their uh, uh, immunization schedule so that on the day when the immunization uh, that that, that there were vaccinations are due they go to villages uh, take them to the health center uh, make sure that they get the correct uh, um, uh, correct uh, vaccination and then give them proper uh, proper uh, make them aware about immunization and other uh, other uh, give, giving them uh, giving them uh, enough data about how to make them aware about immunization and importance of vaccination. And for this, so they have developed apps for all this. And there are around 1,000 devices in the field, especially 600 of, and around 600 of them being used by uh, healthcare officers. And they carry this to the villages for collecting all these data. So let's look at their, uh, their challenges, some of their challenges. Connectivity is still a challenge. Uh, that because of uh, that that we all have even 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 if we are not in village, but apart from that, some of their challenges are keeping these apps uh, what they have in their devices up to date all the time, making sure that the content that they have on this device, device that they use for uh, increasing the awareness with. Oh. It's not in sleep mode. Okay, so, um, and apart from pushing content and app, another major challenge they have is they don't have a registry of the devices. They, uh, they don't know which, who uses these devices, where it is located, and for what kind of app, uh, uh, data collection is happening on these devices. And, uh, and then let's look at some of the uh, uh, solution that we spoke about uh, in the in a couple of slides back, and how they it will it will fit into solving their problem. So, um, so like I mentioned, almost all the solutions such as AirWatch or or uh, Mobile Iron are targeted at bigger enterprises, and uh, the cost is one of the biggest concern that they have for using any of these these apps. Uh, so, uh, and uh, it, you don't need 80% of what they provide. You need only when, only certain percentage of the features that this this uh, these uh, solutions provide, and but you also may may need changes to those kind of uh, features, and you will not get it because they are targeted at certain certain uh, uh, certain kind of customers. So uh, so one of the IAS officer in in Sabarganda, uh, uh, his name is Nagarajan. He approached us. So I work for this company called Multunus, and. 
so they, he, uh, he approached us whether, whether we can build a solution for them. And there have been other customers who have been approaching us to ask similar questions, not exactly the same, but similar questions. So that is when we started off thinking about open source. And uh, so we have started building an uh, open source solution, which contains the very bare minim minimum of uh, MDM solution. Right now, it only contains device tracking. You can you can install you can register device in the in the in the app, and then you can you you push apps to those devices, and it it uh, and that that's all right now. And it's in the process of deployment in in, in Sabarganda, uh, and it takes time because it has to reach all the thousand devices. So in the, in the next few weeks, we'll know okay how it is being used and what kind of problems they still have, and we'll we'll add more features to the system. Uh, once, once the deployment cycle is over, so uh, we need all of your help. I'm talking in this in this conference because this is an Android conference and uh, this is an open source solution. So we need a lot of help from you guys uh, to help us move this forward. The vision of this particular this uh, this uh, this IOFIS officers and and the, and the helping hands he has is to take it outside Sabarganda, outside uh, Gujarat, and take it across across India. Uh, to help us automate and use use devices for more efficient and efficiency uh, effectiveness and that that can't happen without all of your help so uh, please please give us uh, uh, suggestions if you already know uh, how to build mdm solution give us suggestions we can improve the solution and uh, or if you want to start let's let's speak in github and then we can we can collaborate on it so that's about uh, one story uh, and um, let's move to another story. This is a different story. This is not related to open source. Uh, this is this is about uh, information chaos. So we spoke about how how uh, how MDM solution is required for free stuff. Now let's look at the other example. This is in uh, this is in US, but again in the in the uh, health industry. Uh, so you might be you might have seen. Um, in almost all the clinics, uh, the uh, the TV is being played with uh, with content. Sometimes with very informative content about health and other things, and that's that's very common in India also. But this this particular customer with whom we work for, they they went next step. They what they did was they used uh, tablets uh, instead of uh, instead of TVs to uh, show content, informative content to the patients. So the advantage with tablets are they can replay this. They can interact with the with the tablet. They can even share those those content uh, with either way, with themselves or with uh, with their friends, so that that they can watch it again. So uh, so this is a case where the device is installed and there's hardly any interaction with the device once it's installed, and you have to control it control it from a remote location. And uh, so the standard challenges that we spoke about: app updates, content updates. Apart from that, there is uh, there are a couple of more. That is, this particular uh, app which is streaming the content has to be running all the time. Uh, it has to be on the front end, front front line, and this depending on the off hours of the uh, of the of the clinic, the uh, the app uh, the device has to be uh, switched off uh, so that we can we we don't drain the battery a lot, and especially on whole days it doesn't have to be running all the time, and these kind of things has to be remotely uh, configured. And apart from this, we also had a very uh, interesting uh, challenge uh, with this. That is uh, playing Adobe uh, uh, Flash videos. So that was a time when, uh, I think I have five more minutes. OK. That's a time when uh, Adobe removed uh, a Flash app from the Play Store. And Android stopped supporting for that. So luckily, we found uh, that we we were able to find uh, the APK, and then we were able to play Flash ads. But the problem is with uh, so one of like 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 what uh, in the last talk he mentioned about easiness of onboarding. So when we are setting up a device, we have to make sure that all the required apps has to be installed on the device. So that is when we went with the custom ROM solution. Uh, for MDM, so what what this custom ROM helped us was to remove all the bloatwares 
install all the required uh, apps including the flash apps uh, fla flash app into the into the uh, into the rom and also configure certain stuff like uh, setting up of certain uh, volume level or say um, certain wi-fi settings or screen timer settings etc etc in the rom itself so that the entire th thing is automated so the custom ROM was possible in, in our case because uh, we were targeting only one device. The BYOD was not there. If it was there, uh, all of you know if that, that shouldn't have been a solution at all. And it also allowed us to install uh, apps as system apps. System apps are, uh, has special permission and it cannot be installed by the users. So any accidental uninstall of the uh, apps also can, could have been was, was uh, avoided by uh, using system apps. So all this was possible with custom ROM, but custom ROM, like you all know, has its own uh, uh, cons. That is, it voids the warranty, but the customer whom we work with, they were completely fine with that. And it also, you, ha you, can, uh, you can imagine, you, at times you may break the device, and then you, it, then you are gone. Uh, you can't get it back. So how much more time I have? So, uh, so my idea was to cover uh, that uh, what is the landscape of MDM, and we and I, I uh, explained different use cases uh, with my experience where I have seen MDM being used. And uh, so now let's go back to uh, the initial thing that we started uh, about security. So, what about security? So. Uh, security can be provided to an extent by uh, device management API. That's a spe special type of API provided by Android, which allows you to set up certain policies on the device. But it requires specific uh, perm uh, special permission from the user. It, the user has to accept that this particular po uh, this particular app can be installed. Uh, this is different than the normal manifest uh, permissions that you give in your app. And uh, so that's a, that's an area to explore. If you need to enable certain policies on uh, uh, policies, this, those, those policies can be password policies or encryption policies for for certain area in the uh, in the in the in your uh, storage. And lastly, about Android for work, uh, that's a very recent player in this in this entire game. Um, uh, this is this is uh, uh, based on Lollipop's multiple profile concept. Now, starting from Lollipop, you can have multiple profiles in your in your device, and you can switch between those. And this allows if if you are a Google Apps user uh, or or your enterprise uses uh, Google Apps, then you can uh, use Android for work to enable device management and also with the, with the possibility of BYOD. That is, it can work on any device. And uh, if, you are not, if, if, if the device is not running on uh, Lollipop, you can download a specific app and install. But this is still on, uh, on the early stage. It's not uh, c completely open. It's, uh, you need, it's, it's available on, only on request basis. But something to watch out for, this might help uh, enterprises a lot to manage devices remotely. And, uh, and that, that's, that's pretty much about, about uh, MDM. Uh, so what did we learn by building it? Uh, we learned that we can use standard APIs to build a, uh, build a MDM solution, very bare bond, not a very complicated one. And that is what most of the enterprises want. And um, uh, onboarding has to be very smooth, as much as possible, uh, automate the things. And uh, at times, you can, you can look at options like custom ROM, if that is a, that's a way to take. But custom ROM also comes with its own baggage. So be, be careful uh, when, you are, when you are choosing that. And we are big believers in uh, continuous delivery. So uh, release early, release often, use features, switches uh, to enable, disable feature and get feedback and change your, uh, change your approach or change your plans depending upon what, how do you get the feedback on. And lastly, about having a good monitoring system. We literally paid the price for it, not having enough of it. We had a big failure with that. The, it's very important in case of an uh, MDM solution because once you, you, you hardly have any access to the device and the business business uh, revenue mostly depends on the on the on the uh, device so if you lose track then getting it back is very very complicated that's another story i can talk in some other some other we had a big failure with that that i can talk in some other uh, other talk and 
So uh, I just want to conclude with uh, asking for you for the con uh, contributions. Uh, so please, please get, get in touch with me if you have any further questions. I'll be available here. And this is my uh, social aid. Okay. Thank you. Um, I don't think we'll have any time for Q&A. So if any questions, you can take it offline. Am I audible enough? Okay, so guys, just one, give me a minute because this is a hardware demo and things always go wrong, so I just. Okay, so a uh, quick show of hands before I start. How many of you have heard of beacons? Okay, so a lot, right? So beacons, Eddy Stone, physical web, some one of those keywords. Okay. 